recording. Hello, once again, my dear audience, this is your host, Liz Soria, with the Tax Advisor and Business Coach Success Podcast. And today I have another, another amazing, truly uh, expert guest that I am super, super excited to um, introduce to this episode. And the episode is going to be about what is really leadership behavior when it comes to business and why is it so important for us to understand it comprehended and, and really put into practice, you know, uh, as we run a businesses. So um, let me go ahead and do a brief intro here from Art Barter. He rebuilt the culture of Datron word communication. He took Datron traditional power led model and turned it upside down through the implementation of the servant leadership. The result, the small international radio manufacturer grew from a $10 million company to a whopping 200 million company in six years. Well, our dad's amazing. His experience with Detron Transformation is chronicled in the book of his new release, The Art of the Servant Leadership Part Two. Art is the founder and the CEO of the Servant Leadership Institute, SLI, an organization that teaches others how to inspire, equip those they influence through servant leadership behavior. First of all, Art, Thank you so much for being with us. This is I'm really excited about it. So uh, if you want to add anything else to your expertise, because I know you've been in, in business for a very, very long time, and welcome, welcome to the show. How are you today, Art? Yeah, I'm doing great, Liz. Thank you uh, so much for having me on. Uh, really appreciate it. Excited about it. Um, great intro. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I, I'll just add, I'll, I'll started my career with Disney out of school and um, spent about seven, eight years with uh, Disney in Anaheim, uh, working at Disneyland. Um, some in the park, most, most of it's in the admin in part of the building. Uh, but uh, started in my early mid-20s, um, left there and went to work for a manufacturing company and found out I really love to build things. And so I've been involved <laughs> with manufacturing companies ever since. So uh, that's kind of, kind of my passion, leadership and, and manufacturing. So. In manufacturing is a tough uh, industry, it sure is. I mean, you know, I think it's kind of streaming down a lot um, as, as technology is advancing, right? So, to, I mean, to just turn a, you know, a radio manufacturer, you know, company from just 10 million to 200, that is huge. That was a huge uh, accomplishment from your side. Now, can we just kind of learn a little bit there, the secret from that? <laughs> great. You, you have to have great people in your organization. So I'll give all my oh. people the credit first because, um, you know, yeah, I, I have something to do with it. I can set vision and, and, um, and really get people going towards, uh, towards the direction we need to go. But, you know, if you don't have great people working for you that latch on to why you do what you do, you know, your purpose, uh, and you have a great mission, um, you know, it's, it, it's, I, I couldn't have done it without my, my folks at Daytron World. So, um, Hats off to them first because they're they're the ones that really made it happen. Um, so uh, that's see- that's amazing. I, I I like. I'm sorry, but I do, sorry to interrupt. But I do like when I see you know business owners, entrepreneurs really recognizing their staff and and you know as part of the true team because I believe that you take care of your staff and they will take care of you. And a lot of times it goes beyond just money, right? It's just the way you treat them uh, with yeah. respect, you know. Yeah, and you know that's that's you know I spent a lot of years in the power model. You mentioned the power model, and power yeah. model is all about you know what what kind of results are you going to have for me this quarter, and you know how much revenue and profit we're going to make, and uh, you know early in my career nobody worried about turnover, nobody worried worried about employee engagement, um, some of the things that uh, folks look at today. So you know it was all about people went to work for companies they stayed with them for 10 15 years and um True. you know you were there to make money for the owners and that that was it the shareholders and um you know most of the time you weren't treated very well you you hardly ever were taken care of financially yeah you you made a wage but you didn't get to participate in those profits and um and so that power model was you know if if I'm a power leader it's all about me it's all about me and in servant leadership, you need to turn that around and say, it's not about me. It's about all about other people. 
and the people that I serve. And so, um, you know, changing the mindset to focus on other people other than yourself is, is very difficult because you have to look at yourself first. You know, you can't say you're going to be a servant-led organization and announce it to everybody and tell them how, how they're supposed to act unless you lead the way with your own behavior. And that's why behaviors are so important in leadership because, um, and even with your audience, you know, it, it's the small, smaller companies, customers, employees, everyone you deal with, look at how you behave. Um, and, you know, they'll, they'll listen to what you have to say, but the, the most important thing is, do you behave your talk? Do you really behave on, on, on what you're, do you really do what you say? And, and that's really one of the most important things of leading a company is you, you will gain credibility and you will gain trust when you actually behave the way you're asking everyone else to behave and you lead the way. And that, that's really what's important. That's amazing, and, and I really appreciate you sharing that, that, that note with us because I really do believe we, we are like a mirror, we're a reflection. So if we cannot you know, show others what we're willing to do, then how can they really know what you want? Um, so it starts within ourselves, and I have to agree with you more than 100%. The why and the purpose of things that we do um, are, how can you respond to that? The why, the purpose? You know, when I worked at Disney, and, and, and I've learned more about Disney now than I did when I was working for them. When I, worked <laughs> I believe you. It, it, you know, their, their, their purpose was to, we want to make people smile. And right. didn't say anything about the entertainment business, didn't say anything. We would just want to make people smile. And so, you know, in the power leader model, your purpose is to make money. When you get into into really finding out what your gift is, um, and we bought Daytron, we said, what do we really want to do in our marketplace? And we said, you know, it's really not about the marketplace. It's about how do we want to treat people? And we want to treat people with dignity and respect. And so we said, you know what, this is all about other people. So what, what is it we want to do? And we decided that we wanted to positively impact the lives of others today and in the future. Not just selling product, but it was really important to sell product and then support that product in the field with great service and, and customer relationships. And, and so that's what we, we said, that's, that's our why. We're here to positively impact the lives of others. And we said, how do we do that first internally? Because our employees are what's most important to us um, right. in helping us meet that. So we said, we want to inspire them. So with a great mission and purpose. And then we, we need to give them the tools they need. We need to equip them so they can go influence the people around them um, and the people they interface with all the time. So, you know, our sales team interfaces with the customer mostly. We want them to, I want, we want the customers to feel r good or uh, better than, than they were when they first talked to us. And so we want to positively impact that life. Um, a lot of customers we deal with, they have missions because we're in the foreign military business. We want them to be able to focus on tech, uh, or focus on their mission and not their technology. So we make equipment that's easy to use in the most difficult situations. Uh, Amazing. So, so that people can control situations with great communications so they don't have to use anything else. All right? And so if you think so of can, can, can I? Can I add something to that, uh, Eric? Will you say that knowing the why and the purpose of why you start a business and how you can, you know, send out that clear message to your customer is extremely important, isn't it? Because oh, yeah, customers, absolutely. I always say that they have to be treated the very best. So the fact is that we need to realize that even though we have so much technology and all these wonderful things right out there, I still, I'm a firm, I'm, I mean, at least myself, I'm a firm believer that uh, building relationship, it's the most crucial thing that we need when uh, we're dealing with other humans because we are humans, we are people. And I think we kind of forget in with technology that it's like we want to put technology in front of us and kind of, you know, dismiss the fact that, you know, we need to still communicate. So business trust, finish that sentence for me. What, what is part yeah, of that it, business trust? What well, would you add when, to that, please? When you, when you 
develop that relationship with a customer and you ask the customer, how can I help you? All right, are you asking them to help you make a profit? Or are you just gonna- <laughs> I like that. I, I, will, I will help you with your mission. Tell me what you need to do. And one of, one of my uh, customers early on in um, probably around 2000, I asked that question. I was in the, in the country of Zimbabwe and I asked the communications officer and the police there, uh, you know, how can I help you? He says, well, you know, I'm going to have demonstrations here because my country struggles at times with its leadership. And he says, I want to control those demonstrations with great communications so I don't have to bring out any, any armor. I don't have to deal with it with a weapon. And the gentleman's name was Eric. I said, Eric, I will help you do that. And so we gave him great communications, easy to, easy to learn how to use, easy to operate, easy to maintain. And about seven years later, there was an article in the Associated Press that said the recent elections in Zimbabwe were the least violent in the country's history. And so I took that article, got everybody in the company together, said, guys, this is why we do what we do. Number one, you're saving lives. You're putting equipment in people's hands so they can, they can react to things with great communications with, with you know, people that you, so you can help them so they don't have to react in, in different ways. You're saving lives and look, you, you helped create the least violent elections in Zimbabwe in that country's history. That's pretty special. What an incredible feeling, right? I mean, that must be, you know, really incredible to feel that, that you, you were part of, you know, uh, you know, just being part of that. I mean, just being able to, through your, your, your service, you know, and, and, and your mission to, to really reduce, you know, you know, the actual, you know, the, the crime and the war and everything else. And I think that must be an amazing feeling just to feel part of that. It is because you're helping the world, um, focus on treating people with dignity and respect, you know, and, and that's, that's the way we look at it. And, you know, what I want to encourage your listeners to do is when you, when you hear these stories from customers, and it doesn't matter what business you're in, stories are, are what really helps you and your organization focus on your mission. You have to share those stories with your employees. You have to get them together and say, hey, I just heard this from, the employee, from a customer today. I want to share this with you because this is what excites me. I really get excited when I hear stories like this. Uh, share them the good stories uh, as much as you do the challenges that you have. In fact, I would right. encourage you to share more of the positive stories because that's what really gets people excited about, hey, I, I, want, to, I want to go to work today because we're doing something really special for people. Um, and I, I really don't think it matters what you do in your business or how large or small you are. I think if you focus on taking care of people, like you said, the relationships, you build trust. And I will share with your audience, I have competitors who don't understand how we do what we do because we focus on relationships and trust first before we focus on selling. So I want to create a great relationship and a trusting relationship because then now I can offer my services. But if I go in and just offer my services and not build trust and not build relationships, I'm just selling the product for, for a transaction. Right? That's incredible. It really is. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and thank you for sharing that with, with, you know, with the audience and obviously with me. I mean, uh, I feel that, and again, I always, like you say, I said, I always believe in doing that connection, that human connection. And, and I know technology can help a lot, you know, to, to, you know, to help us get a little closer, even if you're, you know, thousands of miles away. But yet, it's just sometimes picking up the phone, right? Calling the customer, letting yeah, them know that you care for them. Dad, I'm, I'm a pick up the phone guy. I, that, that was my generation. <laughs> we, we talk to people, uh, you know, right. we write, write to people, we talk to people. And, and sometimes this email stuff just, it drives me nuts because everybody just <laughs> I, I sent the customer an email. Well, pick up the phone and call the customer. Um, yep. I you agree. Know, let them know you're there and, 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 and let them know that, you're, that they're important enough for you to pick up the phone for a minute and, and engage in a conversation with them. And um, so, it, you know, it, it's an interesting world we live in. The relationship, you know, we have the first generation in, our, in my lifetime that has been raised in this electronic world. 
Yes. And, and that's yes. what they know. And I have to adjust. If I want to influence that life as a servant leader, I have to meet people where they are. So, you know, I've, I've gotten involved in Instagram and LinkedIn and um, Good for you. you know, texting, <laughs> and, you know, I, tr tr I got I, I I got stuff I don't even know what what it is, Liz. But <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> I get to influence people, right? They get to hear hear my story. They get to hear yes. get encouraged, and you know, so it gets delivered through that medium. That's okay. If if I meet people where they are, and that's where they are, then that's where I need to go. And you know, that's kind of the other other thing I've mentioned to your to your listeners is go meet people where they are you know go go take care of people um and inside a company i always encourage encourage my employee if you have if you have a challenge with another department don't send emails back and forth and then get me involved and have an email string that has 30 emails in it i'm not going to read it i'm going to delete it i don't have time for that stuff if you guys can't stand up and talk to each other you're you're 30 feet away in two cubicles stand up and talk to each other don't don't communicate with email and you know that's that's the kind of thing i think we've lost is we've got to give our in, employees a, an environment where they feel safe and they also have a chance to communicate and and have those relationships internally because once they understand how to do that then they can take it to your customers all right you know, I, 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 I have to agree with you on that one too, because I do, again, I think even when we come to relationship, it's not only the customers, it's our family, it's our right. friends, you know, it's, it's our team, the people that we spend so many hours working around us, you know? So what is better than to build stronger and stronger in, in having that, that trust? Um, my question to you, and in, 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 in as you can, probably noticed, I mean, I don't have a questionnaire here, or I don't go by a script. I, I've been very, uh, one of, the, I think one of the things that are very, uh, quite unique about, you know, my, my podcast is that I believe in being just having a natural conversation and kind of thinking what the audience might want to ask you um, in, in, in doing so. Um, what would you define really the word servant? Um, servant to, is it similar or to being humble or how will you define it in your terms art well you know in 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 the uh, uh environment uh, many many years ago servant was someone who who had a master and um you know i get this question um but, you know quite often when someone says you know what i really i really can't get behind the word servant because it means that i'm supposed to be subservient sure. to someone else. and i say yes. no you know, the the motive is different the motive as a okay. servant today is how can i influence your life to help you be better about who you want to be so it's not the goal to 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 influence you and serve you for my gratification i'm here to serve you to help you get better so for employees um i'll look at employees and and I go. You know what? What do you want? To, you, what do you want to do in life? Where do you want to go? And you know, maybe someone will say, "Well, I, I, I want to get an education." I said, "Okay, great. We have an education program. You know, we pay a certain percentage of the tuition. What, what do you want to do? What do you feel good about? What do you What do you like to do versus what do you What are you doing in your job? And sometimes people are stuck in jobs that that's really not their gifts. True. It's really not their gifts. True. You you need to go find their gifts, help them find their gifts. And I always I always like to say, once you find your why, which is your gift, um, then you find your way. And I can't tell you how many times, Liz, I've helped employees move away from a job they started when they got out of school because that was a that was the only job offered to them or the first job offered to them, but they weren't happy in what they were doing. And you really want to be able to, you know, my job is when people leave our, our campus in Vista, California, I want them to come back in the morning. I want them to get in their car and want to come to work. Not to serve me, but because they know they're going to get better. They're going to grow. And we care about them. We're going to take care of them. Our number one value in our company, you mentioned it just a minute ago, family. Yeah. I... I want I want our employees 
children, grandchildren, their families, when they hear the word Datron, I want them to smile. I want them to feel good about it. I don't want them to say, Datron, oh, that company, that, that company took my father away from me. He was always working overtime or, you know, I never saw my mom because he had to get up and come to work at six and then get home until six at night. Um, right. I want them to right. hear Datron and go, you know, that's a great company because they know that I come first. And we always tell people, your family comes first. This company will survive without you. And if you believe otherwise, if you think you're the most important person in the world, I will tell you right now, you're going to be disappointed because your company can survive without you. If you develop good people and put them in their, in their gifts and their roles that they're great at and then get out of their way and let them do their job, and sometimes that's the best thing a leader can do is go, I need to get out of the way and let people go do their job. Now you've got an environment where, you know what, when someone needs to go take care of a family member, they can do it because other people will jump in and pick up and help them. Um, and we saw the strength of this, um, Liz, probably about six or seven years into our servant leadership journey. where. Right. We and we had an employee who had to go take care of a family member. And they didn't have enough PTO. And I watched my employees. I, this wasn't my idea. This was my employees. My employees donated their PTO time so that employee could continue to get a check. Amazing. Wow. Well, See, that's where no. I call it. It's humanity. When we get together and we do good cause, you know, that was a good cause and they knew that they were willing to give up their PTO for that. That's an, that's an amazing story. I love it. Yeah. And that, and that's the kind of things that, you know, I start the, I started the servant leadership culture because I was tired of being used in the power. I've been used and sacrificed my family time. I said, you know what? I'm tired of this stuff. We're going to change this. And I said, what's right. the most important thing in the world? It's family. It's family. Yes, the it people that, are, that you love the most, why do you want to take time away from them? Your job should be about the fourth or fifth. And my priorities are, are my, my family, my, my wife, Lori, and then my two kids, Jennifer and Chris. And then it's my work. And th that's the priority I try and keep is, you know, that's, that's, what I, that's what I need to focus on. And I can't, um, I can't, I, I told someone the other day, she says, you know what, we really, we really shouldn't die sitting behind a desk. No. If we're going to pass on we from this world, we ought to be doing something that we enjoy, right? Um, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'd like to add a statement to, to one of the last things that you, you mentioned is that I, I do believe that, in, in, especially now in our society, and, and I, I like to express my opinion very open, and, and well, I've been criticized in the past, but oh well, it's, it's the way I am. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I've never been a hypocrite, so therefore I have to speak what, you know, what my mind, you know, it, it, the thoughts and ideas that I have. And what I wanted to add to it was the fact that I think society has been built in a way where we're almost functioning like a machine and we're not. So what's happening is that they tell us, okay, you 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 know you finish, you know you go to um, to college or university, you get your degree, uh, you get quote unquote your perfect job, right? <laughs> you have your family, and 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 it's more than that life. So if right. if we cannot truly have a why in, in in a mission, I say this: it's the most important thing to me in my life is that I can accomplish my mission, my destiny. Right. It's I don't want to fit into society. I want to be happy where I'm at. And that means that, yes, as you know, sometimes as we work, you know, self-employed, we're entrepreneurs. It's, it's a lot. It's very difficult. A lot of people don't realize that because we sacrifice a lot of things and we, we put a lot of hours that, hey, we don't get OT. <laughs> you right, know, right, we, yeah. we don't get the big perks as employees. But yeah, we do it because we know deep inside in our hearts, like you, you're passionate about what you're doing because, you know, that what you're teaching, especially, and then we're going to go that for, for the next thing if, if you want to go ahead and um, kind of touch base that, which is the Servant Leadership Institute. It's trying to teach people, uh, you know, methods that's going to help them to understand that, it, you know, not only how to build relationship in business, but also personally, because you need to be happy as a human inside. And it doesn't matter how much material things I say that in my life, I believe that material things come and go. 
What matters is yeah. what you take with you, your memories, what you live and what your legacy is going to be once you're gone physically out of this world. So go ahead, Art. You can, you can, I'm sure you can add a lot to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you, you, you uh, mentioned the word teach and, you know, we, we implemented servant leadership and what we found out was we went out to try and find material and people who were implementing servant leadership that could help us show us how to implement it. And what we found out was there's a lot of people teaching it, but most of them were consultant types that, um, you know, and, and they, and they serve a great role. Don't, don't get me wrong. They, they serve a great role. Um, right. but I was looking for someone in a manufacturing environment that sat in the CEO role or in the C-suite and that could show me how to, to go change the culture and, and, and focus on servant leadership. We had a hard time finding that. So we, we decided to go it alone. And um, so one of the moments that, were, that was key for my leadership team was when I decided to let them define what servant leadership was to them. And I said, you know, guys, I, I want you to sit and define what servant leadership is. And they came up with 10 characteristics of a servant leader. Right? That's, what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna measure ourselves against. Now, that's not the behaviors we teach today, but for them, they needed to own that process. So I let them come up with the characteristics. And I didn't correct them afterwards. I said, you guys define it. Because what I found out is once they owned that definition, they wanted to go make it work because it was their definition. And so they would put more effort into changing themselves if, it was, if they had ownership in the definition than if I just said, hey, you need to be this, right? And so that's when I transferred ownership to the program, really to them. Um, and, and we started learning together what it was all about. And when we started learning together, we, we changed the characteristics. We, we started to focus on behavior. We spent a lot of time on trust uh, because we felt we, we really needed a good, strong trust uh, amongst us. And, you know, after, after about six years, we had some great successes. And people said, Art. Right, you need to share what you guys did because there aren't a lot of people out there teaching people how to implement servant leadership. There's a lot of teachers that will teach you about the concept, but there's not a whole lot of people who will, who will help us go do that. And I said, you know, you're right. And that's why we started the Servant Leadership Institute was to go, go share the knowledge that we had learned by implementing servant leadership on our own company. And, uh, you know, we focus a lot on, uh, on trust and, what we, what we did was we looked back at the transformation of our people inside the company, and we said, what were the behaviors that worked the best? And that's how we came up with our nine behaviors. Those were the behaviors that we found had the greatest effect in transforming your behavior than anything else. Um, and so that's what we, what we focus on. We help people understand those behaviors and why they're so important. Um, and, and, and I know it, it, it's a lot to cover now on your website, by the way, um, because we are going to be wrapping up in the next couple of minutes. But in your uh, in your website, you do have the first chapter, I believe, and correct me here if I'm wrong, uh, about your new release uh, of your book with Art of uh, Server and Leadership Part 2. Um, out of the nine, what would you consider the three that are like really important for people to, to understand that way we can, they can have a better comprehension of what needs to be done at least as, as a starting point? Because if this is practice. This is something that we need to practice like anything else in life, um, especially when we change in our mindset, right? So what would you say with that, Art, please? Yeah, you know, for, first and foremost, you have to decide that you want to serve first. What's your motive? Um, is it all about getting something out of people so you can earn more money? Or, or do you really want to help them get better? Uh, so you have to decide for yourself what type of leader you want to be. So serve first is the most important one. And, okay. and once you decide to do that, then you've got, got a couple ways you can go. But you, trust is a, a, the biggest stone that you're going to uh, try and create that relationship around because – a trusting relationship is one that's very strong. Well, how do, you, how do you get there? The best behavior to build trust is to start listening to people and not just listening to them, but listen to understand what they're saying. 
Thank you. That's very important for people to understand because it's not about listening and comes through one ear, comes out through the other, right? It, it's about really comprehending what they're telling you and, 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 and understanding how can you possibly truly help that person. So right. I would say don't talk too much, listen more, <laughs> right? And then, and yeah, and, and here's the two things you can do um, that I do all the time when I'm trying to, to listen really, really well. I, I go, I ask the question, okay, tell me more or help me understand. Help me understand, tell me more. And if you stay with those two questions until you get a good understanding of what that person is saying and they feel like they've been, they're being heard and understood, that's really what you want to get to. Because once you can get them to feel like they're being understood, now you can go to the empathy stage and real, really feel what they're feeling. Uh, and that's when you really have a really strong relationship. But, you know, to, you got to listen to understand. Ask these two questions all the time. Tell me more. And then sit back and be quiet and don't interrupt and listen. And then, you know, help me understand what you just said. And then play back, hey, this is what I heard and this is what I think you're saying. Is that correct? And if it's not, give them another chance to go through that. So those, those, those three things, decide to serve first, then you've got to build trust. And the best way to start building trust is listening. I thought I was a great listener. I found out through my first survey with my team that I, that was the biggest area I needed to improve in. And so my commitment was I, I went to study listening. And I, what I found out was listening is actually a form of love. And if you really care about a person, you'll listen to them. You'll listen to them. So if you have any parents that are listening, you know, you have got business people, but the business people who are parents, try that with your teenagers one day when you just sit and try and listen to understand instead of preaching the other way. And I will guarantee you it will change your relationship. It may take a little while, yeah. but, but it, it will be well worth the journey. Yeah, well worth the journey. So those are the three, three things. Thank you so much, Mark, because they're very profound. And, and I hope that people who are, who are listening and, and they can really put it to practice. That's what I always say. It's not yeah. what we learn, it's what we can put into place because if we don't practice what we're learning, then what's the purpose behind it? Think about it. You can have all this knowledge and knowledge is power. So what? I mean, that's my way of thinking. If you don't put it to, to work, so what was the purpose for you to invest that time or even money, right, to learn these kind of new skills if you're not willing to put the time to, you know, uh, make it work in your, in your life? I will tell you if, you, if you go from your brain and think about things and you go straight to your hands to try and implement what you're thinking, you're missing the biggest organ in your body. You've got to translate so that hard. to your heart. And when yes. you go from your heart, right, and what I try, what, what, what I'll leave you with this little tidbit is, you know what? How about we teach people to understand the power of love instead of the love of power? Love it, love it. The love Very of power nice. To the power of love, and yes. that's the toughest transition for leaders is to lead from your heart and not from your brain. Uh, and but not from I, your pocket. Yeah, yeah. Lead from your heart and your customers see it. I, I had one of my customers in the Middle East tell me in London last year, he says, Artie, he says, I want you to have this coin. And he says, I want you to understand you and your team at Daytron have served my country more from your heart than any other company we've ever done business with. And I went back to my team. I said, guys, you guys got it nailed. You, you accomplished it because the customer sees your heart. And when that happens, your competitors go, what the heck is going on over there at Datron? Because they're getting business and we're not. And That's it's right. all about taking care of the customer, serving from your heart, and doing it for the right reasons. Right? Yeah. Well, Art, I have to. I have to say, really, it, it, it's been such an honor to to have you. And in, in, I know, you know, we're we reaching almost right at the end of the episode. But first of all, I want to say on behalf of my audience and, 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 and myself, thank you so much, because I think that we are here to teach each other and to learn from each other, right? And, and the most amazing thing is that when we learn our skills is to pass it on, not just to take them with us. Um, so 
people who are listening, please, you know, we, we all struggle, right? We, we, have, we yeah. have our strength and we have a weakness. It's just recognize where are your weakness and how are you willing to put the work, okay, to, you know, to improve and make those changes that you're going to need in your own life. Because if you change your mindset, everything can change around you. And I really believe that. So our that's, that's right. Can, you, you will influence people around you through changing your own behavior first. Yep. 